Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul, and in this RedGamingTech.com video, we're going to be discussing, as well as analysing, tech news which, as usual, has popped up in the past 24 or so hours. Hopefully, you're having an amazing day. We have a ton of stuff to get through in today's video related to both AMD and NVIDIA. And I think the first thing to discuss would be Zen 3 and the RX 6000 series. Although AMD have not exactly confirmed the specifications in their tease, we now have confirmation that events for these products is incoming. And it seems that we're going to get an announcement on 10.08.2020 and 10.28, those are US dates, 2020, for Zen 3 and RDNA 2 respectively. Furthermore, there have been a couple of videos which have been plonked online, and in one of the teasers you can see that Zen 3 seems to have a dual CCD with a single I.O. Obviously, though, architecturally, there are some rather large changes, as we've discussed, well, quite a few times now, uh, with the changes in how the CCX is basically work and the unified level 3 cache. AMD are stating that this is, quote, a breakthrough gaming architecture. Honestly, that makes sense. From everything we've learned so far about RDNA 2, this is based upon what we've learned from the consoles, as well as some leaks, and some official information from AMD. We know that the next generation of cards from AMD support things like hardware-based ray tracing, variable rate shading, blah blah blah, but are also considerably more power efficient than what we have with, of course, the first generation. Recently in a video, I also was discussing the performance of the next generation cards. Now, one thing I did get wrong is that I believed, from what I was told, that it was the same event, but another source basically corroborated the performance information, and I'm pretty damn confident still in my uh, information regarding the performance of these GPUs. If you missed that video, I'll try to remember to link it in the video description of this, but long story short, AMD's cards are going to be quite close in performance to NVIDIA's next generation. Now, what's not known yet is what's going to be faster. I'm told that it could come down quite close in certain benchmarks. AMD largely seem to have settled on the things such as the clock frequency within a few percent now, that's what I'm told, but obviously the rest of the card specifications are pretty much set in stone, so they're not going to, I don't know, like change the bus whip or something like that last minute. But the performance is apparently really good. Certain cards, like the 6700, will not launch this year. I'm hearing some cards will be delayed or will launch next year, much like NVIDIA's strategy, of course, as always, and AMD's strategy in the past. So the 6700, I'm told, is the card that is going to be competing with the um, RTX 3070. Goodness, there's so many numbers. Um, but the 6800 and 6900 apparently will be competing with the higher-end NVIDIA cards and possibly about on par, although... Well, yeah. Will it be? We'll have to wait, of course, for the benchmarks. About on par with Ampere. I am told, though, that AMD do have inferior ray tracing performance, but I can't get that corroborated by anyone else. Only one person has told me that, and they've basically said that the ray tracing performance seems to be a little better than Turing on average. The problem is, though, I suspect it's going to be on a game-by-game -game basis, simply because of how hardware-based ray tracing functions on the RDNA 2 uh, architecture. As for the Zen 3 architecture, well, 15% IPC gains on integer performance are commonly touted. Mixed performance could be a bit different, but for games it could actually be pretty profound, simply because of how the caching system changes for the next generation of Zen with the unifying cache, and obviously, as well, the uh, two CCXs are essentially one now, so a CCX and CCD. You can basically say it's the same thing. Furthermore, we've seen quite a lot of evidence at this point that the clock frequencies are higher. Just recently, we covered the fact that Igor's lab information for the 
16 core processor running at 4.9 gigahertz wasn't quite correct. Apparently it was actually a 12 core processor that was hitting 4.9. And again, those are engineering samples. So will we see five gigahertz for some of the SKUs in AMD's next generation lineup? Honestly, we can only wait. In fact, we even just learned that there's allegedly a 10 core processor too in AMD's lineup. We naturally know that AMD will fill out the list of SKUs for both of their products, graphics as well as CPUs, over the next year or so. And I can fully imagine that AMD will have 6 core products, 8 core products, 10 core, which is new, 12 and of course 16 cores as well for the desktops, and as for the RDNA 2 GPUs, Again, we know that the 6700, 6800, and 6900 are almost certainly real. I'm pretty convinced at this point that the uh, 6900 has 16 gigabytes of RAM. It's not more than that. There are some rumors that it's not uh, 16 gigs, that it's actually a different number, like, for example, 20 gigs or something like that. But to my knowledge, it's not. One thing I'm not certain of, though, is the actual bus width, because I'm hearing that it could be a 512-bit bus. I actually first got told that by Jim at Adore TV in DM, but then a couple of other folks who are not normally the ones who provide me information, like it's not one of my normal sources, but I have also been told 512-bit as well for them. The only issue with that 512-bit, at least to my um my mind is, well, there's a couple of issues. The first is that you would assume it would increase the complexity of the GPU. AMD in the past have created uh, 512, well, rather complexity on the PCB, not GPU. AMD in the past have made GPUs which have 512-bit uh, interfaces, but not recently. The second is it also increases the complexity of like the memory control and other bits and pieces on the GPU. And allegedly the die of this GPU is not, you know, not ginormous. Then again, we don't know what memory exactly AMD are using for the next generation. Is it GDDR6 or is it just GDDR6X? I would say the memory configuration is not known. I would just take it though as a given. It's 16 gigs of memory. I don't think it's going to be more than that for the higher end SKUs. But I'd also like to discuss some stuff for NVIDIA. As by golly gosh, NVIDIA are not... They're not messing around with the performance of the next generation cards at all. We actually have some very interesting leaks. This information is courtesy of Billy Billy. Hopefully I've reasonably pronounced that. He says with lots of trepidation in his voice. Um, these results are um, again leaked, but Rogue Game on Twitter has condensed them all into a couple of very easy tweets, so credit to him as well as Billy Billy. Uh, but um, basically he's comparing the RTX uh, 3080 here against various cards. So, I won't go through all of the numbers because you can read them yourself, but looking at 3 Mark Firestrike Ultra, it's 36% advantage over the 2080 Ti, 64% over the 2080 Super, um, Time Spy Extreme is 38% and 59% respective of the 2080 Ti and the 20. Uh, 80 Super, respectively. 4K gaming for um, the 3080 against the 2080 Super, we're looking at a pretty big jump. It's about 50% plus in most games. Far Cry is the largest jump at 62%. Borderlands is next at 56%. And Assassin's Creed Odyssey and Forza are both 48%. Furthermore, Lefrit David has also provided a couple of other benchmarks too. We're looking at Borderlands, Doom Eternal, Red Dead Redemption 2, and also some and also excuse me some results of the 3072. The 3070 is about on par with the 2080 Ti. This is in traditional rasterization performance. So if these results are genuine, and it very much seems like they are genuine, quite frankly, these cards are just monstrously powerful. Like 
ridiculously powerful. I, I'm actually ridiculously impressed with them. And I, I personally believe that the 3070, at the price that's being asked here, is a really good deal. Um, you're looking at literally the same level of performance, traditional rasterization performance, as the 2080 Ti. The only question we've got now is how well AMD compare against NVIDIA. You can do maths, like you can say to yourself, well, we'll have 80 compute units, which has been long rumoured now for the high-end cards. You take 80 compute units, so let's just say about double that of a 5700 XT, you then add a tiny bit of extra performance because of IPC gains, and then you say to yourself, well, gee, there's a good chance that the GPU is going to hit like 2 GHz plus for RDNA 2, and then you can easily come up with a number which would kind of indicate that, yes, the leaked benchmark we saw from AMD with OpenVR Bench was true, and it should easily be able to outperform a 2080 Ti. Bear in mind, too, that those results were still pretty early. Like, it was like February, I believe, that those results were leaked, which would indicate that the silicon was not exactly in tip-top form, and neither was the software. I'm going to be super excited to see what AMD bring to the table, not just because of the GPUs, but also because of the CPUs. And for NVIDIA, quite frankly, I'm also super curious to see what NVIDIA do for other SKUs. We've seen quite a lot of reports of a 3080 Super um, with 20 gigabytes of memory. Others insist that that's not right. It's instead the TI that's got the uh, 20 gigabytes of memory. And I just want to know what NVIDIA will be doing to fill out to the lower end SKUs. I know that there's so much focus on cards like the 6900 and the 3080 or whatever. But, let's face it, compared to the 2080 Ti, 499 seems like a bargain for the 3070, but it's still 500 US dollars. I'm not saying it's a bad value, because obviously value does depend upon you, and, you know, I know people who buy, like, two 2080 Ti's, um, and they're happy to, you know, do it because they've got tons of disposable income. Then again, I also speak quite regularly with some of you folks, and, you know, you're running, like, a, a GTX 1060 still, and you're waiting to see what will be the jump. The 2060 wasn't quite it. Then you're like, well, the 2060 Super... But now, with Ampere, it could be a really good leap. So I'm going to be very curious to see what the what the options are, especially given the next generation consoles. We know, of course, the Xbox has just had its price officially revealed. We have still no idea officially what the PlayStation is going to have, but I think it's pretty fair to say that Xbox and PlayStation are both forcing NVIDIA and AMD to be very competitive price-wise. Anyway, with all of that said, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. The normal stuff, like, share, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you soon. Take care of yourselves. Bye for now.